What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here coming back at y'all with another episode in our Pac-12 in 31 Days theme. And we are joined by Managing Editor of Coog Center for SB Nation and Washington State Football Insider Craig Powers is joining us today. And I just want to say I appreciate you coming on the show, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm always excited to talk to Cougs. <laughs> Absolutely, man. But I want to start with the Pac-12 in general. So August 11th was the day that Commissioner Larry Scott made the decision to postpone the season. He eventually reverses that and really just gives the most condensed, non-flexible schedule that could possibly be given late in the year. That was condemned by a lot of people when the SEC, ACC, Big 12 played you know, almost full seasons. What was your initial reaction to the decision to postpone the season? And we saw some schools around the country fight back and say they had some alternative plans. Did Washington State have any of those plans if Larry Scott does not change his mind? No, I, I think that uh, uh, WSC was just going to not play if if um, um, if the, if Pac-12 didn't have a season. I don't. Th they weren't going to try to uh, schedule any other um, you know non-conference opponents or anything. Uh, we would have seen them just cancel the season. Uh, my initial reaction was, you know, I, I understood it. They, they didn't know what was going on, and and uh, you know, they listened to doctors or and and scientists, and they they said, you know, maybe it's not a good idea. I, you know, I, what we saw when they played, there was a lot of teams that had to, you know, we had significant COVID outbreaks and things like that. So a lot of games were postponed. WSU had a lot of games were postponed, and it, but yeah, it, it was a bummer. You know, in in retrospect. It was a bummer because, yeah, there was just no way to make up the game. So WSU, you know, scheduled for seven, but only ended up playing four games. Um, so it was kind of a, you know, you can barely even count it as a season. Like it was, it was just a, you know some practice, and obviously the the a scholarship eligibility doesn't count or anything. So um, uh, yeah, it was it, it was in retrospect, you know, you kind of wish they would just started earlier, gave them more time to get the games in. More more time to uh, to uh, to make up uh, games, but um, yeah, I didn't blame them at the start for the decision, uh, but ultimately they probably waited too long to get it going. Right, and you know, on the field performances, it's really hard to grade. To be honest, I kind of throw everyone's record out the window. It was a one in three season for the Cougs. They had multiple cancellations. You mentioned there was no consistency. They played one week. Mm -hmm. They sat down two, three weeks, and they would play two games in a row. No way that you could stay ready to play a game like that. So they also had a first-year head coach. They had a young team. I mean, it was just a lot of new things for Washington State. Did the on-field performance, though, meet, exceed, or fall short of your preseason expectations? Well, yeah, and, and I'll say to your point of the cancellations, they had a game against Cal that was canceled two hours before the game, so – um, yeah, it's but uh, I, you know I I didn't expect much because they didn't have a spring they didn't have any spring practices uh, that got canceled before they even got started. Um, they had a, a true freshman quarterback. Um, you know the defense was coming off a, an atrocious season. Um, really, it it was a surprise to see how well they played against Oregon State right off the bat, and that was really encouraging. And that was probably the fullest the team was for the rest of the season. Uh, so that part is is encouraging because when you get to the the final game against Utah, uh, they're pretty much at the the lowest limit you could possibly be um, uh, players, and especially on defense. And they just got worn out. They they blew a huge lead in the second half. Um, but yeah, like you said, it's really hard to assess it because all the weird stuff, all the roster changes. You know, WSU dealt with, you know, your typical level of transfers uh, based off of getting a new coach. Like, I don't think they had any, you know, extraordinary level of transfers, but you're always going to have transfers when when you get a new coach. And then, and then uh, you know, the, the COVID stuff, we had, we had opt-outs, we had, we had everything. So, um, but by then it was just, it was games they couldn't play. And then of course, games that their opponent couldn't play, like Cal, they got to, they got to, they gotta, um, a COVID test on the bus going to the stadium. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it, it, it's hard to assess. I, I, I would say overall they kind of met my expectations because I, uh, you know, they went three and six in conference play the year before. 
So I wasn't going to expect them to, to, you know, suddenly turn it around, you know, especially with a new coach who only had a, you know, kind of a, a fall camp basically. Um, so one and three is kind of to be expected. I, the, some of the games that got canceled, I thought were ones they could, uh, had a chance to win, particularly Cal and, um, and Stanford. Um, so that, those were bummers. I, I thought maybe that the, those were, maybe they could have had two or three wins, but um, it is what it is. Nothing, nothing, you know, nothing counted for WSU basically. It's kind of like a four game practice uh, for, for Rolovich and, and, you know, and, and Jaden Delora and some of the other young guys, um, which I think will be valuable this season, but um, it was a bummer to, to only get four games, but yeah, yeah, that's, it, it, it's just uh it was, it's just such a silly thing, like to, to get, to gr- try to gain any sort of like insight off of, because it was just such a weird, weird season. Right. I mean, it was all across the country. And, you know, one of the bright spots, though, I thought at least, I like to hear your opinion on it. I mean, last season, Jaden Delora was the guy at quarterback. I thought he showed a lot of potential. He showed flashes of what he could really be. But now Cameron Cooper, Tennessee transfer Jared Garantano are in there fighting for the job. And from what I can tell, it is a real quarterback battle up there in Pullman right now. So what do each of these guys bring to the table and who is your favorite to be QB one for 2021? Well, first I'll say, you know, uh, Delora didn't participate in spring ball. Uh, he got a DUI um, in January and he was still suspended for spring ball. Um, I do expect him to be back in fall camp though. Um, well, in terms of Delora, yeah, uh, I'll say, I'll just start off and say, I, I think he'll be the starter, but, um, he is uh, the, the most mobile, uh, and, and not just mobile in terms of moving the pocket. He's he's a legit runner. He's a, he's 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 legitimately good at at, at carrying the ball and, and gaining yards. Whereas uh, I think Garantano and Cooper are are more mobile in that uh, they can move the pocket. Particularly Garantano, Cooper, he he does have a little bit of um, speed downfield, but he. He he doesn't really look to use it as much, um, and and really Cooper is a guy that he was one of WSU's more highly rated recruits recently, and he just has never um, kind of reached that expectation. He he, uh, we haven't seen him improve a, a whole lot um, since he's been around. Otherwise, I you know I think you would have expected him to take the job by now. Uh, Garantano, we, we saw him for one play in the spring game and he threw an interception and, and, uh, hurt his thumb on a, on an offensive lineman's helmet. So, um, we don't, we know that Tennessee fans don't like him. Um, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I always have to call them out. Like they need to get out of our mentions. Uh, every time we mention Jared Garantano, Garantano, they have to jump in and tell us how terrible he is. Um, <laughs> let it go. He's not at your school anymore. It's fine. Like, it's fine. Like, it, like it, the damage is done. You don't, you, you can stop worrying about it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Garantano, uh, d- the thing about it is, uh, I mean, no- nothing jumps off the paper of what he did at Tennessee. Um, but he does have that little bit of mobility you want. And then um, he does have the arm. And, but I, the what Rolovich was saying about the quarterbacks in spring ball did not um, kind of inspire any confidence about the situation. Like he, he wasn't very positive about their play. Um, he, he seemed concerned about what WSU has for quarterback. Um, but I think that it, it's a bummer that Delora didn't get those extra reps in spring ball. Uh, but I do think just given off of, uh, his experience in the system and the run and shoot and his overall talent level and how he fits with what Rolovich wants to do. Uh, I think ultimately he'll, he'll win the job. And yeah, he, he did some really impressive things uh, last year. He was as, as inconsistent as you would expect a true freshman to be, but he did some really good stuff. Absolutely. I think he could be one of the next big quarterbacks in the Pac-12. I really do. We covered a few of those early Washington State games. And I was I came away really, really impressed with just he just has that like for me, that it factor where like you can't Mm -hmm. teach his instincts and what he does other than, you know, just throw the ball. But you've mentioned him a few times. Mike Leach, 
heads to Mississippi State after the 2019 season, left a huge opening. Nick Rolovich comes in after winning the division title for Hawaii the year before and the Hawaii Bowl. Why was he the guy for this program, and what are your expectations for him at Washington State? Well, one thing that um, kind of – when you look at our, our athletic director, Pac Chun, he, he's definitely very thoughtful in his hires, and he, he definitely looks for coaches that – have succeeded in places that aren't traditionally powerhouses or or or, or 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 at a resource disadvantage. And Hawaii definitely falls under that category of a resource disadvantage. Um, they, they do have history of winning, but um, they really don't have the, the, the money in their athletic program that, you know, a lot of the other teams in the Mountain West do. And so, so to put together winning seasons, a 10-win season, um, that's impressive. Um, and then to bring in a unique system, and that's what we like to see at WSU. Um, there's really not many teams that run the run and shoot anymore. Uh, there's none, actually, <laughs> besides WSU yeah. at this point. And so uh, so they, they're, that, that allows them to recruit maybe athletes that um, other schools wouldn't recruit as hard because they don't fit their systems as well. Um, so, uh, WSU can look for those, uh, twitchy, uh, small wide receivers because those, those play really well in the, in the run and shoot. Um, they don't have to recruit as many running backs because you play a single back system constantly, you know, things like that. Um, you, you can, you can, uh, expand, you know, your quarterbacks who, you know, you still have that ability to recruit quarterbacks who just want to put up numbers because, uh, they're still doing that. And that, that helped definitely help with leech. Um, but I, one thing I do like what it brings is there's a little more um, uh, creativity in the run and shoot than there was in, in Leach's air raid in particular, because uh, he really was still running that almost the same air raid that he ran at Texas Tech. And and we didn't see much. You know, we'd see variations, but they wouldn't stick around for very long. Um, but uh, with with the run and shoot, actually, that you know, what Delora allowed them to do uh, last season is is really used the read option heavily because they couldn't install the offense yet. Um, so we haven't actually seen it in action in, 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 in all its glory yet, but I'm really excited to see it. Um, Cause it is, you know, it, it's a, it's a four, four wide out system and spreads it out. But there are differences in the array quite, a, you know, um, on a fundamental level. And um, it, it was fun to see the different routes and stuff at WSU. We just got, we became so, ingrained with the air raid that it was our identity and like you could just like you know i watch a mississippi state game now and it's just like i just see the route trees and it's it's like this is really comfortable because i know what this is like i know what i know what's going on here um but but yeah but it's it's really exciting to do run shoot um yeah the other things that are up in the air we're not you know we don't know um how well he's going to recruit yet like it you know it's so far, it's nothing to be concerned about, but nothing that's wowing us. I and mean, you know, um, we don't we don't know if you know how he does leading a major program. He 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 did well at Hawaii, but you know we'll, we'll see how the the results pay off. But uh, you know, so we're always cautious with with any coaches. We've been uh, we've had some deep deep depths at WSU, so um, it's always a little scary. But there there are things there. Um, that that are encouraging. Absolutely. I mean, and you know, I've, you've mentioned recruiting, and that's kind of where I wanted to go to next. I mean, that tw this 2021 cycle just wrapped up back in February. Top 60 class for Washington State. The number one wide receiver out of JUCO, multiple impact transfers from all around the country. For you, though, what were the biggest positional needs for Washington State, and who are some guys that can make an instant impact day one? Well, uh, one thing I, I, I like they do is they focused on defense quite a bit, and, and particularly the secondary. Um, we saw they get a transfer cornerback from Michigan State, um, and then they added some other secondary uh, younger guys. Um, yeah, and then w wide receivers always always in need. Um, not as much with the air raid, but because they they really don't rotate them out that much. Uh, but but you uh, uh, still we had some transfers out at wide receiver and, and things like that. So. It was good to see that. Um, I, I liked who they picked up at, at QB. Um, he he looks like he could be an exciting player. He's got an, um, he he played a little bit in spring game Ward, and uh, he looks like he has he's a real toolsy guy. Um, but yeah, and they they just 
the uh, what I liked that they address. So um, WC has a ton of offensive linemen on stat on 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 scholarship because Leach had a um, a policy of recruiting a full offensive line every single um, every single year, and so uh, they kind of stepped back on recruiting some offensive line this year, and they were able to give it to some of the defense and in other areas. So I, I like to see that. The class overall wrapped up. It was, it was much better than it looked like it was going to be early on. Um, the thing about recruiting to Pullman, uh, especially you recruit these Southern California kids, they have their things that they've heard about Pullman and, and it's a small town and whatever, but it, it a lot of kids are really sold once they get to the campus and they see what it's like living in a college town and, and having, you know, everyone's your age and, 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 you know, all those, all the the uniqueness of uh, that Pullman offers, and that really appeals to some kids, but they don't really see it unless they're here. Um, so, given that, like, you, I, I give them credit for the the recruiting class. They really pulled together by the end. I like that they went the transfer route, um, and and really, in terms of rankings and quality, it kind of aligns a lot with what Leach was doing in the last few years after he lost a lot of his big recruiters like Wilson and Salavea to Oregon. Um, so, uh, it's kind of where WSU has been. You hope in, in the ideal situations, you hope WSU is more getting to around the forties and thirties. Um, but hopefully we, you know, maybe Rolovich will move that direction when he has, can get kids on campus and, and he has more time uh, to spend on recruiting. Absolutely. I mean, I definitely, it's definitely hard, especially with now the early signing period, a new coach is so far behind you mm-hmm. know, the rest of the country in terms of coming in and recruiting, especially when you go from Hawaii to somewhere like Washington State. Yeah. I can't imagine. But, you know, I kind of want to shift to next year, man. This upcoming season, we see it every year, especially we saw Delora last year. And with a young, new head coach in, we finally gets a full spring where it's bound to see breakout stars for Washington State. Who are some of these players that you have on your radar as guys who could really break out in 2021? Well, I mean, he's already broke out, but I'm excited to see him play all season as Max Borgie. Um, it, it was a real bummer that he was injured, uh, but he showed in the one game he played um, why he was so good. And then combined with with uh, um, Dion McIntosh, the running back is is set. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see Jaden Delora play. I, I think he's going to win the job. And uh, I hope, you know, a fall camp and having played four games, uh, he'll be – uh, ready to go and be able to see him match some of those uh, the tools he has with an actual more um, fleshed out uh, uh, run and shoot system. Um, uh, uh, Travell Harris, uh, they really seem to be uh, focusing on him. He's a wide receiver. Um, they also he he's a he was recruited as a running back and he's a great kick returner. Um, but they also get him mixed in with with a few runs here and there. Um, he's just a, a phenomenal athlete and, um, I'm excited to see him with a full season of stats and a full season of, of plays that are designed for him and, and all that. Um, uh, on the defense, I, you know, uh, I just, I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> like, uh, we're kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. Um, I'm hoping the experience with guys like Jihad Woods and stuff will, um, root, um, cause for improvement. It will, will bring improvement. And then I, I, I believe that Jake Dickert is a good defensive coach. And I, I just want to see the improvement on that side. Cause if they, if they can get the run and shoot where we think it can be, it, as long as the defense is just kind of middling, uh, they'll win some games. And and that's kind of what you saw in, 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 in some years under Leach, you know, if they just get the defense to the middle, the offense is good. And, and then, then you're good. But yeah, I mean, yeah, that that WSC definitely has some guys. I think are going to put up numbers this year, and uh, but it, it'll be interesting to see on the defensive side of the ball if anyone steps up in the secondary to uh, to kind of help out. Yeah, and I mean to be honest, man, looking at this schedule, I think the Cougs are going to have a tough road, especially with you know question marks, especially on defense. I mean, a tough a tough road games against Arizona state, Oregon, Washington. I mean, to get those three teams, which are probably three of probably the four top teams of the conference on the road is brutal. Then you still have a matchup with USC. 
still mm-hmm. get a out of conference matchup with BYU, which of course we don't know what they're going to be with Zach Wilson, but they've been good for multiple years now. What is the ceiling and or floor for this 2021 team for you? Well, I think the the floor is probably something like if it, everything goes pretty like really bad, I could see like a, a two two and ten season. Um, the ceiling. Uh, if, if everything goes right and, you know, they get the three non-conference wins, they beat BYU, um, you know, they beat Oregon state, uh, they, I, you know, we always, if, if a true kook fan just writes off the apple cup as a loss, <laughs> we don't, we, 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 we have to be proven, proven that we can even compete in that game, uh, before I'll even pick them to win. Uh, but I think Stanford, uh, that they, they could beat Stanford, um, Cal, some people are high on Cal. I, you know, I, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, um, they, I think their defense is good. Um, it, it definitely gave the air raid a heck of a lot of trouble, but um, we'll see how, you know, if there's differences in, in how they can attack it. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's games I could see um, on the high end, uh, a seven win team on a low end, a, a two or three win team. Um, so that, but again, that like, the one thing that I have in the back of my mind is that experienced teams in college football tend to do pretty well, especially you know at WSU historically. Uh, they got a lot of experience returning, um, so maybe that'll push them up higher. But again, the defense—if the defense is not there, they're not going to go far. And it, and like I said, they were three and six in conference play in 2019. They were one and three last year, uh, so that's that's you know four and nine over the last 13 Pac-12 games. Uh, it, it's hard to think they're gonna, you know, suddenly turn it around and and be a you know five and four uh, type type team in conference play. So that's why you know I kind of settle up settle around seven wins is maybe the ceiling for me. Yeah, I mean, hey, bowl eligibility is always a goal, and I'm sure the Cougs fans would be happy with that. But man, I appreciate you coming on here, talking Washington State football with me. It's been a great experience to get all our listeners exposure to all these different teams and y'all you know we're sec based podcast so y'all are way up there in the corner of uh, of the country so it's real good to hear about washington state and what's kind of going on there now that you know leeches out and what, what the new direction is but where can our listeners find you man i always tell them sb nation sites are some of the best out there to check them out so where can they find your site and where else can they find you well, I'll say, uh, you know, our website is Kook Center, kookcenter.com. Um, I am, I, I, the, the most popular, uh, most well-read blog I've ever written on there is uh, reporting on when WSU fans went to Auburn. I see the Cadillac Williams jersey behind you. Um, went to Auburn and drank a bar dry in, in Auburn uh, <laughs> beer. So, so that's, that's, that's WSU. We didn't win that game, uh, but it was close. Uh yeah. Auburn turned out to be really good that year. Um, but uh, but but they WC always wins the party, so that's what Gardner Minshew said. So um, but so <laughs> yeah, uh kookcenter.com. Um I also have my own podcast. Uh we, we have it's attached to Kook Center called uh Podcast versus Everyone. Um so we talk about uh WSU mostly on there, hoops and and football and all that. Um and uh yeah, you can follow me, I think. My handle's right there. It's the, at the Craig Powers. Um, you know, I talk about WSU. I talk about a lot of soccer, so uh, be ready for that. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, I appreciate you having me on, man. It's always good to talk about WSU. Absolutely, man. But, yeah, that Auburn, that, that Washington State gave them one of their best runs of the year because then we just hit that hot streak that year. That was a crazy, crazy season for Auburn. But, man, we'll definitely be reaching out closer to the season. It's going to be a real awesome Year for Washington State, I'm really excited to see what Delora does. That kid is going to be a stud. I'm very, very confident in that. But, guys, make sure to go check out Washington State football, everything Craig does. Make sure to go follow him on social media. You all know where to find us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel now to enter our giveaway. But, guys, for Craig, myself, and the Blue Bloods, we are out.